Hey people, it's me again. So, anyways, now I'm in my room, and um, so, anyways, as I was saying on my blog for my last video and the video before, is that that I was just uh, getting over Ricky when I met Drew, you know. So, as as to kind of sum it up there was that um, I was having a whole silent treatment with him with uh, Ricky around the time when it was the end of the, the last half of 09 and it wasn't until like the start of last year when I was starting to talk to Ricky again you know and and I think he was uh, where I was asking him about what happened to his phone because I was trying to call him or text him and then the phone was uh, not in service, you know, and then and then he was kind of uh, saying like, oh, he didn't pay his phone, you know, and then and then I think what happened, it was until a little bit later on, I think where he kind of changed his whole profile and said he was out of state and then it kind of be made me mad that that he didn't tell me he was moving out of state for I guess it was just a job thing, you know. A job thing or a school or whatnot, you know, and and uh, he didn't even tell me all that, you know. I think if it hadn't been for dad or Matt or any of those other people that got in the way of that relationship, I probably would have known about that. I probably would have also been able to have some sort of long distance relationship with Ricky, you know. But no. It's just like for some reason they were just preventing me to get to him. I mean, I just don't don't understand why all these things that had to be in the way were in the way in the first place, you know. Although, it could have been, pretty much been prevented anyways with uh, Dad if he just simply agreed to certain terms as far as, as far as all those kind of things, as far as on, online dating goes, and, you know, that, that he needed to stay out of my way, and, and that I would have uh, simply uh, carried my for wherever I go, if they go to, if they ask me to go to their place or whatnot, you know, and all that, you know. But it was also at that time, I think it was Dad was still having that whole that whole uh, empty nest syndrome. And as I kind of stated on my blogs and a lot, is that I'm the baby of the family. I'm the youngest one, and so so basically, the youngest is always tends to be babied anyways, no matter what, they would always still have that bit of that empty nest syndrome anyways, because of, because it's usually the youngest one, the last one to leave the nest, the last one to do this, the last one to do all that, you know, so, anyways, as I was kind of saying there was, um, that I was kind of pretty much mad at at Ricky enough that I just decided that I just to forget about him, you know. And then I think it was until maybe like around a couple months later, around July, where I kind of emailed him about it, where I was confronting him on on that sort of thing, you know. And then the last I heard from him was that he was saying that he had moved out and he ap apologized to. Apologize to me for for uh, not putting a whole lot to get to me, you know. Because after all, it was Ricky had a car and he had like had like a job and school and all that to deal with, and as well as family, you know. And so that was the other reason why I couldn't see him a whole lot, 
because I couldn't really just drive up to his place, you know, and, and, uh, so anyways, I had to kind of drive, he would have to drive over to here, you know, and all of that, you know, so, so anyways, as I was kind of saying with, um, with my grill, you know, that, that it was like about this time last year where I was starting to talk to starting to hook up with him, you know, and, and do all the sorts of things in here, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean, as far as things, <laughs> so, anyways, I think everything had, was kind of fine with him until maybe it was like around last July, and then I think I didn't talk to him for a while until... It was kind of like around August or, or was it October when I talked to him again. It was kind of like around the end of October, maybe the start of uh, November when I was talking to him again and then we're, we're not to not to hook up with him again. I hooked up with him at least, uh, I guess counted like four times, you know, through, through the course of the entire year or so. That it, as I said, it's just that I couldn't really just go over and see him just like that, you know. But he had to go over to my, go over to here to see him, you know, to see me, you know. But so I guess to where this whole problem with him kind of started, I think I was just kind of coming off a little bit too strong on him, you know, saying that maybe I just wanted him to. Just, Spend the night, you know, and cuddle and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, maybe, I think if he just simply just told me he just wasn't really ready for a relationship and, um, and that, and then told me to wait, you know, and slow it down a little bit, and then, then, then none of this sort of drama with him would have happened, you know. Instead of just kind of outright lying to me about, oh, I'm seeing someone else, and then when it turns out he wasn't really seeing someone else, you know, he was just, I don't know, just wanted to, me to keep away from him for a while until he's ready, you know, that sort of thing. So, anyways, I guess it was just the whole course of, um, uh, last month was like the last that last uh three weeks where i was just expressing all that anger to him you know by leaving all these all these uh messages on his voicemail you know and and yet i feel bad about that you know but i was still kind of angry at him for that you know and then i think then it was just about two weeks ago where he was kind of saying like leave me alone and all that sort of stuff you know it was that whole frustration with me and all of that, you know, and so it's not at this point where we're kind of having that cooling off phase, you know, after having this whole huge little argument and then having to wait for each other to say I'm sorry and that sort of thing, you know, and if either one of us just stops being so stubborn about it, you know, and admit that we we're both sorry and all that, and that we still wanted to see each other and all that sort of stuff, and we'll work out the whole situations and play by ear, that sort of thing, you know. I had, like, proposed to Dad about, about that, uh, that maybe if I do get to talk to him again, he still wants to see me and all that, that I could always have him or Corey or Mom drive me to his place, you know, and then we could spend the night there or what, you know, and all that sort of stuff, you know, to do all the little, all sorts of things, you know, and I could like, meet his family, you know, his parents, his brothers and sisters, you know, and that sort of stuff, you know hang around with his friends, you know, and that kind of thing, you know, but, but, it's just all uncertain, you know, with that, but I, it just, it seems to me that I just can't seem to give up on, on that, because no matter how hard I try, I just put a whole lot of 
feelings and F and energy just getting to know him and all that sort of stuff, you know, and and I think he kind of also knew me that I put some sort of effort into getting to know me and all that, you know, and all those little things. I told him about the Corey's little problems and all that sort of stuff, you know, and all those little things that kind of prevented me from coming out in the first place and all that. I always tell these guys in, in confidence and sort of thing because it was something that they should know the whole reason why why it would be hard for me to kind of perform because I kind of repressed myself a little bit due to like Cora's little problems you know if anybody had ever seen these sort of things on on TV shows and all that you know about the I guess I should just say it's just that even though it's now over with and I don't have to live with this sort of scarlet letter anymore, maybe, almost, you know, but, although, I guess I should say is that because of that, I had to kind of repress myself, but then I think I probably had to repress myself there anyways because of people who were just simply just didn't quite understand the whole thing about being gay at the time, you know. And then also having the disabilities and with Asperger's, you know, but although I was just worried that people would get the two mixed up, you know. They would have gone around and said like, Oh, he chooses to be gay because he has a whole Asperger's, you know, and that he can't relate to women, you know, that sort of thing. When it's, when in reality, it's just that I have no attraction to women. What part of that don't you understand, you know? There are some uh, people there that are gay and have Asperger's or bi that have Asperger's or whatnot, you know, and it was one of the girls that was in Glade, uh, that the first uh, gay and lesbian club that I went to and I was going to school in Texas had had um, had uh, this yeah had dyslexia, but she was also also was bi. And then there was another girl that was in that was there. I think her name was like Audrey, who I guess she was just stated as being. By curious, but also had dyslexia or ADHD, you know that sort of thing, you know. And then also was that the the by curious questioning phase, you know. But as I kind of said, it's just the whole the whole IA thing is kind of a little little too many letters there. They always use the term LGBTQ, you know. The lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, in questioning. As far as that goes. But then the intersex and the allies is kind of not really needed. But then we can do, do like the, Q, the QI because the intersex, as far as it kind of goes into that same kind of category there. But as I kind of stated that, that I kind of, pretty much consider myself to be gay, you know, but I don't know what you would call it if if you were also not only attracted to biological males, but also attracted to trans trans males as well. So here it is with me, it's like, I could be attracted to both biological males just like myself, and guys, and people who are F2Ms, you know, that that in, in essence they'd be just like me, but without the proper equipment, so to speak. You know, but it probably doesn't really matter as far as how I would do it with them because I, I I'm what they call a versatile, you know, so which I do either way as far as on here, you know. So, 
even though I hadn't really kind of mentioned a whole lot about the whole me mechanics of uh, sex, gay sex, you know, but I don't really need to kind of mention it there, you know, so. Anyways, I guess this is just it. So, see you guys later.